So, Daddy Elong is continuing to be in the news as we all know his acquisition of Twitter is going to be formalised either today or by the end of the week. And there is much speculation, mainly from hard leftists and blue lamb whales, that Twitter is going to become this breeding ground for white ring incels to spout all their incelness and talk incelly. I may have made up a word or two there. In any case, he has been out in the press giving hints as to what his agenda is. So for information on that, let's turn to that gossip brag the Hollywood reported for the latest Elon news. Twitter won't be a, quote, free for all hellscape, end quote, Elon Musk tells advertisers. The billionaire is expected to complete his 44 billion takeover of the company by the end of the week, which as headlines go is very encouraging. Twitter will not be the free-for-all hellscape some are fearing it will become when Elon Musk completes his takeover, the billionaire tweeted Thursday. While Musk has previously raised concerns with his focus on free speech, and by saying he would allow former President Donald Trump and other band members to return to the platform, he sought to reassure a key demographic Thursday under the headline, Dear Twitter Advertisers. Yeah, this is absolutely correct. This should be at least one, if not the first priority Elon Musk has as he takes over this sinking ship. He needs to unban people who have either A, not done anything wrong, just got on the wrong side of some crazed, armpit-haired, platted feminist despot, or B, are absolute pillars of different communities and fellowships. Donald Trump is only one of them. Hell, how about Alex Jones, James Lindsay? What about the law pope himself, Nick Ricada? All these people never deserve to be banned. But here's the thing. They are gone. And they have moved on. Why should they come back? What's the incentive? That's why just unbanning people is not only the first small step in making things better. In making Twitter great again. The real change comes from one thing. Policy change. That is what matters. Sounds obvious. But just like passing a law in the US... It's not an easy thing to do, but I think he's on his way to doing just that. Musk struck a conciliatory tone on Twitter as he laid out his case for acquiring the social media company, saying he seeks to encourage dialogue between users with different beliefs. The reason I acquire Twitter is because it is important to the future of civilization to have a common digital town square where a wide range of beliefs can be debated in a healthy manner, without resorting to violence. There is currently great danger that social media will splinter into far right wing and far left wing echo chambers that generate more hate and divide our society, Musk tweeted. Yeah, it's very hard to disagree with this statement unless your sensibilities say free speech is rooted in white supremacy or some other <laughs> Discourse is something that while people say they want it, they never really act on it. And again, this is a trait exclusive to members of the left. Why? Because people who are on the right, centre-right, or even centrists, those type of personalities have tried to offer mediation, have tried to get people to sit down at a table and talk to one another. And it's just been downright refused. I'm thinking off the top of my head here, but remember when Joe Rogan offered to chair the US debates in 2020? Now I know he said it in a little bit of a playful manner, but I'm quite certain he would have done it. But as soon as he mentioned it, people just called him far right for the mere suggestion of it. The only successful mediation that I am aware of is from my own country back in 2014, where the radio program LBC managed to organise a TV debate on Britain's membership of the EU between Nigel Farage, who was at that time head of UKIP, and Nick Clegg, who was the Liberal Democrat deputy PM. So I do admire the sentiment Elon is putting out there, but will people even be willing to try? Only time will tell. While Musk has previously spoken of Twitter as a digital town square, he now added there must be a degree of content moderation in his open letter. Elon says, That said, Twitter obviously cannot be a free-for-all hellscape where anything can be said with no consequences. In addition to adhering to the laws of the land, our platform must be warm and welcoming to all, where you can choose your desired experience according to your preference. Just as you can choose, for example, to see movies or play video games ranging from all ages to mature. See, from this, some people might read it as, whoa, he's walking back on free speech and bowing to the Twitter lefties. No, 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 no. I don't think that at all. If anything, I think he has been an astute businessman. He knows the colourful language that attracts people on the left, and he knows the banging of the drum in the name of freedom attracts people on the right. So this is partly him playing the game. But also, it sounds like he was 
he's kind of revealed a part of his first plans. That you can tailor your Twitter page to be more in keeping of, say, how YouTube operates. Well, when you click on the video, it then generates other suggestions based on that click, and therefore you have the sort of views you want to see. The only thing I'll say to that, however, is, does that not sound like an echo chamber in itself? Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but, again, time will tell. Now, he ends the article by saying this. I also very much believe that advertising, when done right, can delight, entertain, and inform you. It can show you a service or product or medical treatment that you never knew existed, but is right for you, he said. Yeah, advertisement is not a dirty word. It's the best of a bad system when it comes to capitalism versus socialist economics. But outside of that, as Elon just said, when done right, that's crucial. Adverts can be good, which has been a real problem for many years on Twitter. All I've seen when advertisements have come up, and bear in mind that it is randomly generated, supposedly, it's been lots of sex-related content, or adverts from giant corporations like McDonald's or some sort of pharmaceutical that's just trying to make a profit. These things have been prioritised over small businesses, people just trying to make it, trying to build something for themselves, and advertise on the platform, they just get left behind. Now, I imagine Elon is going to approach Twitter with one foot on the ground. I can't see him passing the buck over the management of this company, of this acquisition, as you were, judging by how much media attention it's gained. I hope he does turn the ship around. I truly believe that. But people are not just going to come back just that easily. I'm going to be cautiously optimistic, just like the most of you are going to be cautiously optimistic. So with that being said, if you like what you heard, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Check out my Bitch You A Rumble alternatives, and I will be back with more Elon updates or other stories very soon. Take care. And bye for now.